Rahman, a thematic overview. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wal musaleen wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Thumma amma ba'd fa'a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna a'atayinaka al-kawthar fasalli li rabbika wanhar. Inna shani'aka huwa al-abdar. Rabbi shahli sadri wa yassilli amri wa ahlul uqtatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Thumma amma ba'd. Once again, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today we have to do a lot, a lot, a lot of things. I'll try to give you a list, inshallah, just so you can keep things organized in your notes. The first a few pointers I'll make to you have to do with Surah Al-Kawthar, a surah that I think all of you know by heart because it's nice and small. This is a surah that is related to something that's very terrible, and very sad that happened in the Prophet's life, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'll give you a little bit of background. There was uh, the Prophet's uncle who used to live next door. His name is Abu Lahab. He used to be the next door neighbor to the Prophet Sallallahu And they, sh- they shared what you call nowadays a front porch. But you know, nowadays when you have a front porch in your neighborhood, there's no wall in between like your front porch and your neighbor's front porch. But there is a wall between the backyards, right? So the backyard has a fence in between, but the front porch doesn't have a fren- fence in between. But old homes, th- there was actually a, a whole wall even on the front. So when you came out of your house and you were on your front porch, it was actually fenced off just like the backyard. Okay, and then there was a gate and then you got out. So if you're on, and, and, and the other thing was back in the day in old homes, they couldn't afford to build too many things with a roof, with roof on them. So a very small part of the house was actually covered, meaning the place you went to sleep. But even the cooking and the eating and most of what you did, it was actually on the front porch. Which means that people could hear each other, right? When people were living their life and there's, talking or whatever, they were actually aware of the fact that the neighbor could hear them. Is that clear so far? Right? So this is how they lived. If you've ever like been to, uh, back home, many Muslim countries are still like this. If you go to the villages, actually, the, the, the front of the house, which is majority of the house, is open air. And it touches a wall with the neighbor's house. And they can hear you and you can kind of hear them. Okay? Uh, so, the Prophet ﷺ had a baby boy. And the baby boy passed away. And obviously there's sadness and crying going on in his house. And who hears it? His uncle does. Now, as before I tell you what happens next, you know, in, in ancient wars, uh, if you know, two generals are fighting an, uh, you know, with their armies against each other, and then one general got a letter or got news that the other general had a baby who died, then they would actually stop the fighting, send a letter of you know, some sort of condolences, and say, listen, you and I are enemies, but that doesn't mean a baby's death is still a sad thing. And you know, as a matter of honor between men, I feel you know our condolences to you and your family. We'll take the, we'll give you a day off for the fighting. We'll resume later on. This was kind of like an honor, even among enemies, kind of thing, right? Because the death of a baby is not something anybody should celebrate, right? And and that's you know, uh, in previous nations, even enemies had honor among them, right? You don't want to just stab someone in the back. You want to you want to face them off face to face, you want to even fight with honor, you know? Like in the Wild West even, you know how they had that like, quick draw type thing? Or you take 10 steps either way or whatever. You're not just gonna shoot the guy if he's walking down the road and he doesn't see you and you're kinda like, got him. You wouldn't do that, that's us nowadays. But not, not them back then, right? But Abu Lahab is a different kind of guy. He's his uncle, and the, other, the things to know about uncles, or family, in particular, is that family can, when family says hurtful things, it hurts way more than anybody else saying hurtful things. Okay? Like, uh, a lot of people really appreciate what I do uh, in front of me and also online. But there are a lot of people who hate my guts. They absolutely cannot stand my existence. They think I'm shaitan or dajjal or they have a new name for me all the time. I don't really look myself up, but I'm told that there are quite a few people that are very passionately in hate with me. <laughs> you know, but you know what? It doesn't really faze me. It doesn't really affect me at all. Um, I'm appreciative that they have the time in their life to spend on emotionally spend on me. Uh, I, I appreciate that. But other than that, it doesn't really actually affect me at all. But if a family member, a family member comes out and says, "I can't stand you. I hate you. What? It does it hurt?" Sure, alhamdulillah, I don't have that situation. But if that did happen, it would really, really hurt. Now imagine 
there are two things. When something terrible happens in uh, a person's life, like a death of a, a child or something like that, something horrible, horrible happens, there are two things that are painful. There's the pain of the event, the pain of what happened, and then there's also the pain of other people's hurtful words. So just to give you an example so you can relate to it easier, uh, let's say, Allah forbid, you failed a class. Right? There's the pain of seeing the report card, and then there's the pain of the commentary from your brother or your sister or your mom or your friends. Like, their words really, really hurt. So there's two pains you're dealing with, you understand? And sometimes, even the pain of what you go through is less, but the pain of the words people are saying is more. Like, it just, it really adds up. People email me those kinds of things, you know? People just, they email me the kinds of things that people say to them and they really hurt. And you know, this lady, she emailed me that her son, when, she, when her son was born, he was, um, he had a cerebral, cerebral palsy and he's severely disabled, her, her son. We made dua for him and, and her. But her in-laws say that it's because of her being evil that Allah is punishing her child, right? Which is, first of all, not true. Second of all, a really wretched, horrible thing to say. I mean, it's a really, really horrible thing to say. But imagine this woman's already, you know, with, uh, dealing with the pain of her child being in this kind of difficulty every single day. And on top of that, there are people that are saying these monkey kinds of things. And they're supposedly loved ones, you know? So that's, how, that's really painful. So the same way, the Rasul has this baby and the baby passes away. He's incredibly sad. The, the mother of the believers is incredibly sad. She, she's, she's also really sad. Abu Lahab hears this. And he starts singing and dancing and jumping up and down. And he runs out of the house and starts singing, Batara Muhammad, Batara Muhammad, Batara Muhammad. Muhammad Sallallahu his name will not be carried on. His name has been discontinued. Nobody will know his name in a generation. It's over. Why did he say that? Because girls, they go on to another family. They become part of another family. Who carries the family name? and has children that will carry the family. Sons do that. So he says, aha, yes, his legacy is over. Because he only had daughters. And the son that was born passed away. So he's celebrating. And the, these horrible words are being heard by the family because this is open porch. And it, they're being not heard by some stranger, like some enemy that you, if he's like a dog barking, you don't even listen. Who is saying these things? His own uncle. His own uncle is saying these things. So in that, environment, Allah gave the Prophet ﷺ a gift. And that gift was this surah that you guys know, the short surah of the Qur'an. And he told him, Inna a'tayna al kawthar. We, no doubt about it, have given you al kawthar. See, in Arabic you say kathir. Kathir means a lot. Qalil means a little, kathir means a lot. Kawthar means a whole lot. An inc uh, incredibly large amount. It's called Siratul Mubalagha. One day you'll learn Arabic and I won't have to explain what that means anymore. But Al Kawthar is what Allah gave the Prophet. Now, when the Prophet was asked, what is, that, what is this Al Kawthar that you've been given? He would explain that it includes, it's not limited to, but it includes a hawd, a river, and a, and a pond even in heaven that he will drink from, that Allah has specially made for him and that he will give us drink from. al hawd fil Jannah. It's a special place in Jannah Allah has given to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But al kawthar is actually, that's one of its meanings and one of its primary meanings. It's not the only meaning. You see in the Qur'an, if Allah wanted to say that I've given you a river in paradise, he would have just literally said, I have given you a river in paradise. But he says, I've given you an incredible lot. A whole lot. Which means the river is included, but it's, the discussion is not limited to that river. So what else has Allah given the Prophet ﷺ? He's given him the final message. He's given him an honor above all else. Actually, today we're going to spend our time understanding what is this whole lot that Allah gave the Prophet ﷺ. The meanings of this ayah and what it includes. That's what we're going to be trying to look at. Okay? But the first thing I want you to know, at least while we're still talking about Surah Al-Kawthar, what I want you to know, is here the Prophet was dealing with two kinds of sadness. What are the two kinds of sadness again? The baby's death and his uncle's words. And Allah tells him, stop thinking about what you lost and stop thinking about what you're sad about. Why don't you focus all of your attention on what I have given you? And that's a huge lesson in Islam for all Muslims, which starts with the Prophet We have to, when, when difficult times happen, 
this is one of the surahs to recite, to remind ourselves, much more difficult things happened to the Prophet himself وسلم, and at that time Allah taught him, Allah guided him to focus his attention on what Allah has given you instead of what Allah has taken. Inna <coughs> Now when you get something, you celebrate. When you get something, you celebrate. And a celebration in Islam is called Eid. Right? We call it Eid. We have two kinds of Eid. And Eid is also associated with you know, in Eid do we pray? Is there a celebration that includes prayer? Sure. And does Eid also include, in cases, sacrifice? You sacrifice an animal and you give the meat and all of that, right? Look at the next ayah, فَصَلِّ لِي رَبِّكَ وَنْحَرْ Pray and sacrifice. When are you supposed to do that? Pray and sacrifice. When you celebrate something. What is he celebrating though? His, his child just passed away. His uncle's saying hurtful things. Allah is saying, what I have given you is so heavy and so beautiful. And should you make you so happy that now is the time even for you to celebrate. Your son is not lost to you. Your son is waiting for you at the, at the pond in Jannah. He's given direct access to Jannah. So he, he makes him celebrate. And then he says, look, you, as while you're celebrating, you might still be able to hear the sounds of the dog barking. You might still be able to hear Abu Lahab saying his thing. So let me tell you just something about him. In Nashani Aka Huwal Abtar. Your enemy, he is the most cut off. And the word the most cut off were used because he was saying that Rasul Sallallahu his legacy will be cut off. And then Allah is saying no one will be more, more cut off than Abu Lahab. Inna shani It is as though Allah is saying, you worry about being grateful to me for what I've given you and I'll take care of your problems. You don't have to deal with Abu Lahab, I'll deal with Abu Lahab. I got him. I got him for you. Don't even focus on him. The other thing we're learning now, when we become grateful to Allah for what He's given us, and we pray and sacrifice out of appreciation for what Allah has given us, then we don't have to worry about the people in our life that cause us problems. Allah takes care of them for us. Inna shani akahu You with me so far? So now let's talk about this kawthar. The, the whole discussion today will be about al kawthar. What is this great thing in addition to this river that Allah has given His Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam? You see, there are some things we're supposed to do. Who is our, whose sunnah do we follow? Rasulullah sunnah, sallallahu alayhi wa right? He does something and it becomes a legacy for us to follow. He prays a certain way, we pray that way. He smiles, we smile. He says, say salam first, we say salam alaykum first, right? So what he does becomes a legacy for us to emulate, to, to act like. We imitate him in virtually everything we do from eating to, with the right hand to entering with the left foot in the bathroom, etc., etc. We, we try to emulate him in all of these things and that's called an observance of the sunnah. You all know that, right? That's, that's our way of observing the sunnah. And you, we imitate him out of love. This is it's an act of love that we do these things for the Prophet وسلم, and imitating him. Now, there's the sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, and there's also the sunnah of Allah. Allah does certain things. But we cannot imitate what Allah does. Not in most cases anyway. Allah creates, we can't create. Allah sees everything, we can't see everything. You understand? Allah provides guidance, we can't provide guidance. There are things Allah does that only Allah can do. We have, we're in no position to do that. There are things that the Prophet does, can we do those? We could do those. But there are things that Allah does that only Allah can do. That's pretty obvious, right? But look at this one sunnah of Allah, there's one sunnah of Allah that we have to follow. And that is, إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِي There is no doubt about it. In fact, Allah and His angels, all of them, send prayers and salutations upon the Prophet ﷺ. You know when we say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah says that too. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ Those of you who believe, Pray upon him. He didn't just tell the believers, believers, send salat, say sallallahu alayhi wasallam for the Prophet sallallahu Just say that. No, he didn't say that. He said, Allah does it. His angels do it. There's no doubt about it. Therefore, those of you who think you believe, those of you who, who, who are convinced they believe, you better do it. Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. And send peace upon him in the most submissive way, in the most respectful way. Whoa. Now every time we say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, every time we say Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad, 
we are actually not only following a sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu we're actually also following a sunnah of all of his angels. By the way, are, is every angel his angel? Yes. For every human being, at least there are how many angels? There's at least two angels. So their population is at least twice us, twice of us. Then there are angels that do other things we don't even know about. So the population of human beings, since Adam alayhi salam to now, imagine that. And then double that at least. And then there are the angels that we don't even know about. Legions upon legions upon legions of angels. And all of them will be called Allah's angels. All of them are sending salawat upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so are we. But that's not all. We're not just following the sunnah of the angels. Allah Himself, Allah Himself is sending His, his respect, His honor to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sometimes Allah is proud of His creation. And He praises what He created. This is Allah's way of praising and showing pride in His beautiful creation of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما. When you hear that, you and I are supposed to say, اللهم سيد 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 اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد. اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد. If you don't know this, you should memorize it. This is priority for you. This is absolute priority for you. This is one of those acts of worship that is so high up that even Allah Himself teaches us to do it Himself. He Himself taught us to do it, so He, he says it Himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know? And what does it mean that Allah is sending salawat upon Him? That every time Allah says something kind towards Him, His, his status is elevated. Now imagine that every time we say salawat upon the Prophet His level is raised. How many times is Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam being said? Let's take this conversation further. Every time I say his name, I say it and you're supposed to say what? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You're, you're absolutely supposed to say it. Now you know why. Allah, all of Allah's angels do it. Allah does it. Why are you being cheap? Why are you being cheap? If his name comes up, even he comes up as a pronoun, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you do it. You don't become cheap. You don't say, I already said it five times. I'm tired. No, 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 no. You do it. You do it. You don't hold back. Not in this. And you're making yourself richer. You're filling your own rewards when you say this. Okay, so that's one. On this note, I want to tell you a crazy story. Uh, Sheikh Muhammad Hassan, who's an Egyptian scholar, was telling this story actually. He was, um, you know, he gives, he's a lecturer in Egypt. Uh, may Allah protect the people of Egypt and the difficulties they're going through. And may Allah protect the scholars of, of Egypt. He, like thousands and thousands of people listen to this man's durus, right? His lectures. And this one guy comes up to him and says, my mom's really, really sick. And she's really, really upset. Uh, I, she needs to talk to you. And he says, I have a few, some of my students are doctors. I can send them to your village. He says, no, I need you to come. Can you please come yourself? She specifically asked for you. And he said, okay, I'll come. So he comes and he goes into this village. It's like this off-road place. Like no car ever goes there or whatever. And he gets there and he goes into this old lady's hut. And she's lying there and she asks, is he here? Is he here? Is the sheikh here? Because she listens to him all the time. Is the sheikh here? And he says, he's here. So she says to him, I have a real problem. And he says, what's the problem? She says, I don't know what I've done wrong, but I haven't seen the Prophet Sallallahu in my dream for at least seven days now. And he says, uh, what, what do you mean you haven't seen him for seven days? She says, I see him every day. But I haven't seen him for seven days. What have I done wrong? What's going on? And he's just sitting there crying his face off. <laughs> like this woman just said, said salawat upon the Prophet day in and day out, every chance she gets. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. She just sends salutations upon the Prophet and Allah gives her the gift out of her love for Rasulullah He gives her a visit of Rasulullah over and over and over again. I didn't even watch the rest of that video. I had to stop it. <laughs> there are people like that in the world. SubhanAllah. You know, Allah says to us in the Quran that Allah will not destroy a people while they're still asking for forgiveness. There are some people who their prayers, this on this earth, even now, there are some people because they are praying, the world hasn't been destroyed. 
because they are praying, the ummah hasn't been destroyed. You know there are people that are suffering in, in Palestine right now? You know, I, I was mentioning this in my khutbah, maybe because of their du'as, we haven't been destroyed. Like the only reason we're safe is because they're making the real kinds of prayers that are supposed to be made. So they're, they're in need of rescue, but at the same time, they are rescuers for the rest of us. They are rescuers. May Allah protect them and you know, provide, provide uh, them, them Allah's aid. Anyway, so that's salawat upon the Prophet Then Allah says, وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ Even on this earth, Allah says, we have elevated your mention. Meaning you are mentioned in very high circles. Well, you can't get higher than who? Allah. And Allah is mentioning you. Allah is sending salawat. But even, it, even on this earth, what happens? You know, we give the adhan. And when you give the adhan, you say, Ashhadu anna Muhammad ar Rasulullah. And any Muslim who hears that part says what? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, all over the Muslim world, you know, we don't feel this. This is one of the reasons, inshallah, I intend one day to do a, like a guided tour of different parts of the Muslim world for Muslim youth from here. Because we don't feel this. We don't feel what it's like to live among Muslims. You don't, that there's a, it's a different feeling. It's a different feeling. It's a different feeling to wake up to the call of the Adhan. It's a different feeling. And I'm not just saying going to Mecca or Medina. I felt so different when I was in Malaysia. I tell you, for the first time I felt like Muslims have strength. Muslims are powerful. You know, this deen is powerful. It, I just, it's a different feeling. And I want every Muslim youth to feel it. I want you to know what you're a part of. You don't actually know. Living in Texas and living in New York and living in California and living in London, you actually have some idea what you're a part of when you're a part of the summa. You don't really have a taste for it yet. You have to taste what it's like to be among Muslims. Just everyone around you is a person of la ilaha illallah. It's different, man. But now listen, a, this, a fifth of the world's population, adhan goes on on the mic. You know, here you have regulations about whether or not you can give adhan out loud. And we think, oh, what's the big deal? I'm telling you, when you go listen to the adhan out loud, and it's, it's filling the streets, and it's filling every house, and it's filling every market, it's filling every office, then you'll know what you've been missing. You'll know what you've been missing. You know, we don't have trees here much in Dallas. So when you go to like Seattle or New York or California, do you notice that there's something really beautiful that we're missing? You notice it, right? Immediately kind of hits you like, wow, we're missing that. We don't have that. And you know what? The same way, because it's, it's a sign of life. The adhan is a sign of life. For a people, it's a sign of life. And every time the adhan is given, somebody hears, Ashhadu anna Muhammad ar Rasulullah, what did they say? All the streets, all the offices, all the apartments, all the houses, everybody says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, on this earth, now we're in a situation, on this earth, as a matter of fact, somewhere an adhan is being given all the time. Somewhere the time of Dhuhr just came. And somewhere else it'll come in one minute, and somewhere else it'll come in another minute, and somewhere else it'll come in another minute, and you can go the world over and the adhan is being given. Somewhere, somehow, the Prophet ﷺ's name is being mentioned, and somebody is saying, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 24-7, non-stop, he is being, his name is being pronounced. And that's just in the adhan. That's not to include the prayers. How many Muslims are praying? At-tahiyyatu lillahi was salawatu was salawatu was salawatu was salawatu was salawatu was salawatu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Allahumma salli ala Muhammad Isn't that part of our prayer? It just became part of our prayer It's permanent How many people are praying? All over the world Different prayers Fard prayers, sunnah prayers, tahajjud prayers, optional prayers And how many people are just have the habit like that old, that amazing old lady who just say salawat whenever they get a chance. She's cooking, she's saying Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. She's walking around, she's saying Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. I met people like that. They're just, they're, their tongue is busy. They're just busy. They don't sit quiet, they just Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Kama salli ta'ala Ibrahim ala Ibrahim. Salatu wa salam alayka ya Rasulullah. You're just sitting there, just looking out the window, saying salawat. Getting richer, you know. 
So this is what رَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ This is part of the kawthar Allah gave. And every prayer that we make is heard by the Prophet wasallam. And every time his rank is raised. We'll talk about his raised rank now. Allah Azza wa tells the Prophet, أَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِدُلُوكِ الشَّمْسِ إِلَىٰ غَسَقِ اللَّيْلِ وَقُرْآنَ الْفَجْرِ إِنَّا قُرْآنَ الْفَجْرِ كَانَ مَشْهُودًا وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَحَجَّدْ بِهِ نَافِلَةً لَكْ عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَبْعَثَكَ رَبُّكَ مَقَامًا مَحْمُودًا In Surah number 17, Allah told the, prayer, uh, told the Prophet وسلم, Establish the prayer in the early mornings when the sun is just coming up until the part where the night becomes dark and make sure you pray, recite the Qur'an at Fajr time, Qur'an al-Fajr, the Qur'an of Fajr. Inna Qur'an al-Fajr kana mashhuda, no doubt about it, the Qur'an of Fajr time is going to be witnessed. Meaning Allah will witness it, the angels will witness it. You know, Fajr is least attended most places. The Qur'an that's being recited by at Fajr time is attended by like uncountable numbers of angels and uncountable creations of Allah. And Allah describes the Qur'an at Fajr time is witnessed, is witnessed. Imagine human beings are the ones who least witness the Qur'an of Fajr time and the rest of Allah's creation witnesses the Qur'an of Fajr time the most. إِنَّ قُرْآنَ الْفَجْرِ كَانَ مَشْهُودًا Then he says, وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَحَجَّدْ بِهِ And in the middle of the night, in the part of the night, you make the hajjud prayer, the middle of the night, the vigil prayer. نَافِلَ تَلَّكْ This is an additional responsibility on you. Meaning Allah did not make that mandatory on us. We don't have to have to hajjud, but he, it was actually mandatory on him. Then Allah told him, why should you pray so much? عَسَىٰ أَن يَبْعَثَكَ رَبُّكَ مَقَامًا مَحْمُودًا Maybe, perhaps, your master will raise you to a status, to a place that is highly praised. It's called Maqam Mahmud. Maqam Mahmud. A, a place that is praised. So I want to describe to you what this place is that is praised. Judgment day when it happens and all human beings are raised and we're standing in front of Allah in rows, right? Uh, Allah Azza wa says in Surah, uh, surah in Juz'ama Surah Al-Naba, He says, لا يتكلمون. Everybody will be standing, all human beings will be standing and not one person will be speaking. Our tongues will be locked up. We will not be able to speak. I cannot imagine a crowd of billions upon billions upon billions and there's pin drop silence. Can you imagine? When there are 100, 200, 300, 400, 1,000, 5,000 people, what do you hear? You hear a buzz, don't you? Somebody's whispering, somebody's talking, and their, their voices mesh together and there's a buzz in the air. There's an echo in the air, right? You have in the entire score of humanity from Adam salam to the last human being that will ever live, all raised, all standing, and not a peep, not a sound. And then Allah says, إِلَّا مَنْ أَذِنَ لَهُ الرَّحْمَنِ Except for the one that the most loving and caring gave permission to. Meaning the one he gives permission to is going to be someone who Allah loves and cares about a lot. No creation of Allah will speak, and then all of a sudden people notice that there is a man, they see him in a distance, and he seems to be, ri everybody's on the same level, but this man seems to be rising. And so because he's rising and everybody's on the same level, everybody can see him rising. And they wonder who that is, but they can't even ask because they can't speak. They can't speak. And that's actually the Prophet wasallam. And then he will be speaking with Allah directly, and he will be asking on behalf of the Muslims. He'll be asking for mercy and you know, forgiveness on behalf of the Muslims. Ya Allah, they messed up. Go easy on them. And there's a, there's a back and forth conversation. Inshallah ta'ala, if we get time, I'll share with you the entire conversation tomorrow. But I'll share with you the first part of it today. لا تكلم نفس إلا بإذنه Nobody will be speaking except by his permission. Yunadi ya Muhammad. Allah will call on him. Muhammad, فيقول لَبَّيْكَ وَسَعْدَيْكَ وَالْخَيْرُ فِي يَدَيْكَ وَالشَّرُّ لَيْسَ إِلَيْكَ وَالْمَهْدِيُّ مَنْ هَدَيْتَ وَعَبْدُكَ بَيْنَ يَدَيْكَ وَمِنْكَ وَإِلَيْكَ لَا مَنْجَا وَلَا مَلْجَأَ مِنْكَ إِلَّا إِلَيْكَ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَيْتَ سُبْحَانَكَ رَبَّ الْبَيْتَ I respond to your call that I'm so happy to do so, Ya Allah. And all good lies in your hand. And there's no evil that comes from you. And the evil cannot be attributed to you. And the one who is guided is the one that you guided. And your slave is right in front of you today. And I'm, I am from you and I'm come, I've come back to you. And there is no rescue, no place to hide except that comes from you and goes back to you. You are the blessed, you are the high, you are the perfect one, the house, the, the master of the house, Rabbal Bayt. This is the Prophet speaking to Allah. All humanity is quiet 
And Allah's, and by the way, Allah calls him and he says, Ya Muhammad. He calls him by his name. He calls him by his name. You know what that teaches you? Remember I told you yesterday, people called him what? Ya Muhammad. And what happened to them? All their good deeds are taken away. Who, get, who has the right to call him Ya Muhammad? Allah gets to call him that. And even that on Judgment Day, even in this world, and that's actually an expression of how angry Allah is on that day. Because we'll see in the Qur'an how Allah calls the Prophet It's not like that. Allah never calls the Prophet, Ya Muhammad in the Qur'an. Hey Muhammad! Muhammad! Never. Never. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this, this is only an expression of, of the Day of Judgment. But inshallah there's a negotiation that happens between, between uh, uh, Allah and the Prophet Sallallahu on behalf of us. And that inshallah, if I get a chance to print it out for you, I'll share with you tomorrow. أَنَّ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ قَالَ مَنْ قَالَ حِينَ يَسْمَعُ النِّدَاءَ اللَّهُمَ رَبَّ هَذِهِ الدَّعْوَةِ التَّامَّةِ وَالصَّلَاةِ الْقَائِمَةِ مُحَمَّدٍ الْوَصِيلَةِ مُحَمَّدٍ مُحَمَّدًا الْوَصِيلَةِ وَالْفَضِيلَةِ وَبْعَثُ مَقَامًا مَحْمُودًا لِلَّذِي وَعَدْتَهُ Have you heard this before? When do you say that? Hmm? Very good, after the adhan. Whoever said this at the time he heard the adhan, he said, O oh Allah, the master of this perfect call, رَبَّ هَذِهِ الدَّعْوَةِ التَّامَّةِ وَالصَّلَاةِ الْقَائِمَةِ And the, st- the prayer that stands, the one who's the creator and the guider towards this prayer. آتِي مُحَمَّدًا الْوَسِيلَةِ وَالْفَضِيلَةِ Give Muhammad the means and give him that special standing. Give him the means to speak and give him that special place where he can stand and speak. What are we talking about? What was that place called? مَقَامَ Mahmud. وَبْعَثْهُ مَقَامًا Mahmuda. Same words again. Let him stand on the place that is praised. Maqam al Mahmud. Alladhi wa'attahu. The one that you promised him. Whoever says this, Hallat lahu shafa'ati yawm al qiyamah. Those are the people for whom I will make a case on Judgment Day. People who make this dua when they hear the adhan, those are the people that I will speak on their behalf on Judgment Day. So don't be cheap. Learn this dua. Long for listening. By the way, when, we, when do we make this dua? Ah, but what about when you never hear the adhan? If you never hear the adhan, you never make this dua. You never make this dua. You never qualify. At least attend some prayer, some prayer in a day that you get there before the adhan. If you can't attend any of them, you have some severe disability called a PlayStation. You can't attend any of them. At least go to Jumu'ah before the adhan. At least go to Jum'ah before the Adhan. At least give yourself the ability to qualify for the Prophet's Shafa'ah. This is the Prophet's offer to you and to me. Hear the Adhan. Get there for the Adhan. Ati Muhammad al Wasila wal Fadila wa Darajat al Rafi'ah wa Ba'athu Maqam al Mahmud al Ladi wa Atta Hallat lahu Shafa'ati yawm al Qiyamah. May Allah make all of us from them. Okay, now we'll keep track of time a little bit. Um, a few more things. How Allah calls him in this world. How Allah talks about, to him or about him even in this world. In the Quran, there are different prophets mentioned. Can you name some of them? Musa alayhi salam. Who else? Musa alayhi salam. Hmm? Dawud alayhi salam. Listen, I'm going to recite some Arabic to you. See if you hear some prophets' names. Ya Adamu anbi'hum bi asma'ihim Ya Adam uskun anta wa zawjukul jannah Ya Maryam inna Allah astafaki Ya Dhal Qarnayn imma anta uadhib Ya Isa inni mutawafika Ya Nuh innahu laysa min ahlik Ya Dawood inna ja'alnaka khalifatan fil ardi Ya Yahya khudhi al-kitaba bi quwa Wa nadaynahu an Ya Ibrahim Ya Musa innani an Allah Did you hear different people's names? Some of them prophets, some of them not prophets Maryam salamun alayha or Dhul Qarnayn maybe not a prophet but still, what do you hear when you hear their names? What, what word keeps coming up? Yeah. Yeah in Arabic is a way to call someone. You don't translate it. You don't translate it as yo or hey. You just don't translate it. You just translate it as an exclamation mark at the end. In other words, if in Arabic you say, Ya Zainab, you don't translate. Hey Zainab, or yo Zainab, or oh ye Zainab. Uh, you translate that as Zainab. That's how you translate it. So they have this way of calling someone. The way you know they're calling someone, they use the word what before? Yeah, it's called adatu nida, a way to call someone. Okay. So we saw Adam alayhi salam, ya Adam, you know, Isa alayhi salam, ya Isa, ya Nuh, ya Dawood, ya Yahya, ya Ibrahim, ya Musa. You don't find in the Quran, ya Muhammad. 
You just don't have it. What you do have instead is Ya Rasul, Ya Ayyuhal Rasul, Ya Ayyuhal Nabi, Ya Ayyuhal Muzzammil, Ya Ayyuhal Muddathir. Allah will say, O oh, noble prophet, noble prophet, noble messenger, the noble one wrapped up in a blanket, the noble one covered up. Allah will not call him by his name. Allah will call him by his titles or by loving nicknames by loving nicknames, never directly by his name. Is that something? He called all the prophets by what? Their names, not the prophet. Special status, the special status. Ya ayyuha rasul ya ayyuha nabi And then the other thing, the prophet Muhammad is mentioned by name four times and by an additional name, Ahmad, a fifth time. The word Muhammad occurs four times the word Ahmad occurs once, okay? And even when Allah mentions the word Muhammad, He actually mentions the, His title along with it. مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ وَلَكِنْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Muhammad is not the father of any one of you, or not, not your men, because all the, all the baby boys, what? They passed away. وَلَكِنْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ However, He is what? Did you hear the words? He's the Messenger of Allah. Allah says, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرَّسُولٌ Muhammad is nothing but a messenger. The word Muhammad came up, what other word came up? Messenger, immediately. Then Allah Azza wa Jal says, مَا Actually, مُبَشِّرًا بِرَسُولٍ يَأْتِي مِنْ بَعْدِ اسْمُهُ أَحْمَدٍ I'm here to give you good news of a messenger who will come after me. His name is Ahmad. Allah says, Muhammadur Rasulullah walladhina ma'ahu wa shidda ala al-kuffar ruhama baynahum. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Muhammad, the word Muhammad comes up, Rasul comes up. Muhammad comes up, Rasul comes up. Muhammad comes up, Rasul comes up. Meaning Allah never, even, even when He mentions His name, He mentions His title. He does it every time. What a, like Allah is showing this messenger an incredible kind of respect. There is only one time in the entire Quran where Allah mentions the name Muhammad and does not actually mention the word Rasul. Once. And you know what that surah is? Surah Muhammad. In Surah Muhammad, Allah does not focus on anything but the name Muhammad itself. Because that was the purpose of that surah was to focus on that name. If we had more time, I'd explain to you why that happens in that surah. It's a special reason for which Rasul isn't mentioned in that surah. It has its own purpose. Okay. amanu wa amilu salihat wa amanu bima nuzila ala Muhammadin. وَهُوَ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ كَفَّرَ عَنْهُمْ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ وَأَصْلَحَ بَالَهُمْ خير. This is just some things about the name or the way the name is used. But now some things about what it means. What the word Muhammad means, inshaAllah. The word Muhammad is, it has to do with two things. Someone who is praised and someone who is thanked. I'll say that again. The word Muhammad has to do with two things. Someone who is praised and someone who is Thank. Does that remind you of anything? Praise and thanks. Huh? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Hamd is the same origin. From, the, from that origin, we get the word Muhammad. The word Hamd and the word Muhammad are related to each other. They're from the same origin. Okay? So Muhammad also has to do with someone who is praised and someone who is thanked. Secondly, it is someone who is praised and someone who is thanked continuously and a lot. He's continuously thanked and he's thanked a lot. Now when you say thanked a lot, I want you to understand. Continuous is understandable, right? It's, it's done all the time. And by the way, if he was only praised once, he would be, his name would be Mahmud. Mahmud would be someone who is praised and thanked. Muhammad is someone who is praised and thanked continuously and a lot. Now let me tell you about this a lot business. There are two sides to it. There's the quality of praise and thanks and the quantity of praise and thanks. You need to note that down. A quality of praise and thanks and the quantity of praise and thanks. What does quality of praise and thanks mean? Any thoughts? The quality of praise and thanks. The sincerity with which you do it, the emotion with which you do it, the excitement with which you do it, the enthusiasm with which you do it is a lot. It's highly enthusiastic praise and thanks. It's not some fake 
cheap praise and thanks to the Prophet ﷺ. That's Muhammad. The second is about not quality but quantity, which means it's done in great number. That is the meaning of the word Muhammad. What does the word Ahmad mean? Because that's the other name, right? Muhammad is mentioned four times and Ahmad is mentioned once. Ahmad also has to do with praise and thanks and also has to do with quality and quantity, but there's a difference. It's not, co it's not always in, or constant. It's something else being highlighted in the word Ahmad. Ahmad suggests the one who is praised and thanked more. The one who is praised and thanked more. And there's one more meaning of Ahmad. Listen carefully now. The first meaning was the one who is praised and thanked more. The second meaning is the one who praises and thanks more. The one who praises and thanks more. When you say more, he studies more. He plays more. He works more. What question comes in your mind? What question comes in your mind? More than what? More than who? Isn't that true? More than who? Any creation of Allah, any creation of Allah, put them before the Prophet wasallam, and the Prophet is thanked more and he is praised more. Any creation of Allah, put them before the Prophet wasallam, and the Prophet of Allah praises Allah more and thanks Allah more. Both in quantity and in quality. He just does it more. He does it better. Quality means he does it better. Quantity means he does it more. I keep referring to the fact that Muslims are roughly how much of the world's population? One-fifth. You know the majority religion on the earth is Christianity? And Christians are really big on praise. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Praise. Love of praise. It's a religion of praise. They sing praises. They hum praises. Pretty much it's a religion of praise. It's a religion of hamd. In one sense, it's a religion of hamd. You know what's amazing about the word Ahmad? In the Quran, Allah quotes Jesus, Isa, and He says, وَمُبَشِّرًا بِرَسُولٍ يَأْتِي مِنْ بَعْدِ اسْمُهُ أَحْمَدٍ Jesus is saying to His followers, I'm here to give you good news, that a prophet will come after me, his name is Ahmad. His name is someone who praises more than I do, who thanks more than I do, and his name is indicating that he will be praised more than I will and thanked more than I will. We are a fifth of the world's population and yet we praise and thank Allah's Messenger more than even the people who consider their Prophet a God. We still do more hamd. They don't just hear Jesus and say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Their praise, the praise of their Prophet is not always followed by the salawat and salam from Allah Himself from all the legions himself. As noble as Isa salam is, even he recognizes Rasul Sallallahu will have a special place. He will just have a special place. That's why it was important that he say it. It was important that Isa salam say this because his followers will become deviated later and they will think that praise is true praise is for who? For Jesus. First of all, true praise is for Allah, but among creation, nobody beats the Prophet. Nobody beats Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam.